Hello, hello. Happy last Thursday of September. I can't believe it's already, the month is almost over and we're heading to October. Um, time is going by very, very fast. I'm excited to have another Instagram Live today. For those people who don't know me, my name is Lisa Solomon. I'm the founder of Athenium Collective. It's an online education platform that is devoted to crowdsourcing knowledge and creating classes uh, virtual classes in the um, <clears throat> advertising, marketing, and media industry. So I'm really excited today to have one of those experts join me. Uh, Olivia Hawkins will be joining, and she is uh, joining right now. Yay! see I think it's working yay I'm always excited when it works hi Olivia hi Lisa how are you I'm great how are you doing well awesome I'm excited to um have you join me for today's Instagram live and I was just I always do a little brief in introduction about who I am and what I do and what Athenium Collective is and I'm so excited to have you on board to teach one of the courses and um, we've actually been spending a lot of time I forgot to put things on do not disturb so I'm getting all this stuff um, anyway uh, we're teaching we're working right now on a course on digital media buying that Olivia is teaching and it is so good I am so excited because I am going to this weekend start putting the stuff into practice because you've broken it down into a way that makes it so approachable and easy for people to do. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and I kind of wanted to start off the conversation with, you know, tell us a little bit about who you are, how you became sort of this expert in digital media. Um, and let's just start with that. Yeah, awesome. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. We're really excited to be partnering with you guys. Um, so my background, my name is Olivia Hawkins. I am broadcasting live from Atlanta, Georgia, my hometown. I uh, got my start in digital marketing, digital media about eight years ago at a couple of agencies located in the Atlanta and North Atlanta markets. Um, and it was so, so interesting getting to work with small businesses, local service providers, starting budding e-commerce businesses and really have an impact early on in their growth by way of implementing pretty basic digital marketing and media tactics. I, um, after about, you know, four or five years here in Atlanta, decided to make the move to New York City, as one does when you're a part of the advertising and digital community, uh, where I worked at Vayner Media, which is Gary Vaynerchuk's media agency. Uh, during my tenure there, the person who hired me, Jeff Nicholson, had approached me about joining Nickel Notes, which is his passion project. So Nickel Notes is a combination of a few of our passions around entrepreneurship, education, growing businesses, and digital, which for me is just a perfect storm of the best of all worlds. And so we're really excited to be partnering with Athenium Collective to bring you guys a digital media course where we're gonna outline how we buy certain platforms and tactics across different advertising ecosystems. Now, when you were doing, when you were working at an agency, was this how you were buying media um, is through these platforms? Was it very self-service or did things evolve over time? Yeah, great question. So I did get my start in a uh, programmatic real-time bidding environment. So the first ad I ever bought was a paid search ad. However, that was almost a decade ago and things have certainly evolved since then. And would you say that you know, when you look at digital buying, like I think even 10 years ago, programmatic was sort yeah. of at the very beginning. So Absolutely. I can imagine how much it's changed. So much. And, you know, when we talk about programmatic, that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But when you really break it down, it's just real time ad buying in any environment, which is what search has been since its start. It's always been an auction. And so, you know, traditional media or even older forms of digital media, um, you had to still call up your rep, right? You'd say, I want to buy a banner ads in New York Times. Get on the horn, call the New York Times and buy your banner ads. Uh, what really happened over, I would say, the late 2010s is that, uh, or excuse me, right before 2010, we had these programmatic exchanges that were built in this auction environment that was copied from search, where now advertisers could plug and play different audience segments against 
their advertisements. So really, regardless of whether or not you knew somebody at those publications, you can now have your ad appear in the New York Times without ever even contacting someone there by way of Google. Well, it seems like when I look at the sort of media budgets in general, what is it like a huge percentage of most media budgets goes to Facebook and Google, and then the rest gets distributed amongst the other traditional, maybe more publishers? Yeah, absolutely. So over the last couple of years, we've really seen the duopoly emerge between Google and Facebook. And so what that means for us as advertisers when we plan our marketing and media budgets is that realistically, 60 to 70 percent of our budget is going to go to those two platforms because that's where we're going to be able to reach the most people um, with the most, I would say, uh, a menial ad formats. So these are ad formats that are accessible to consumers that they understand they've been exposed to. And then, of course, we can get more creative with that other 30 to 40 percent for emerging technology, new platforms, things like Instagram, TikTok, you know, whatever it is that's the latest and greatest. And would you say that the this sort of media buying, when you look at the, the self-service sort of platforms, is that considered more efficient media because it is self-service and you have so much more control over it? Absolutely. And so what the biggest thing I would say the auction environment has created is transparency. So nowadays, you as an advertiser or a brand understand 100% what you're paying for. Whereas previously, you were given a set rate you were told, you know, impressions were delivered and you just sort of crossed your fingers and said, gosh, I hope so. <laughs> now we have a lot of different tracking in place, which confirms and validates not only did our ad show, but were they shown to humans? Were they viewable? Was it worth paying for? Yeah, it's so funny. When I first started in the business, that's how we sold. It was like, it's this is the rate and you're going to get so many impressions and mm -hmm. you're I mean, most of the time, I think they did happen. But over time, I think that changed. Was it above the fold, below the fold? Was it trackable? Did it get viewed? And how yeah. long did it get viewed? And all of that. Um, and I think that you do a really good job in the beginning of the course kind of talking through all of those different metrics and just ways of thinking about, you know, what is media and how it gets bought and sold. I'm curious because it is so like you have control over it. Like you, there's so much self-service aspect to it. Mm -hmm. Why would you even need an agency to do that? Yeah. If you're an advertiser. A great question. And, you know, we talk a lot about the merits of outsourcing, going through an agency versus, you know, in housing and doing it yourself. And my answer is, you know, there is no one size fits all solution. I think for some organizations, it makes a lot of sense to bring in an agency team who's a well-rounded group of experts across a myriad of channels. For some businesses, you know, if you're smaller, if you're leaner, if you're more focused in one or two platforms, it might make sense to hire two or three experts essentially in-house to handle those efforts for you. But again, it varies pretty drastically depending on what your business goals are. And so your experience has been more on the bigger brand side where you know, you're a large company. You're not going to yeah. have, you're going to have to hire, right, agencies and teams to help you with all of that because you're not buying four keywords, you're buying thousands of keywords, you're optimizing, your business is so complex, for, you know, you might have more than right. one product or whatever. Right. If, you know, if you're a global business operating in, you know, a ton of major markets throughout the world, if you are, um, you know, even like a, a U.S.-based big multi-conglomerate business, you probably do need that large team of experts, whether it's channel experts or vertical experts to really sit side by side with you as a brand and say, here's the strategies that you should employ. Um, but I have also worked a lot with smaller businesses where, you know, even just outsourcing to one or two freelance people, agency people to, to run these efforts can be the most efficient and cost effective way to start testing some digital marketing advertisements. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Because you there's I think, the level of budget is within your control and the ability to optimize is within your control as well. I think what's so interesting is because there's so many uh, courses and you know, websites and things dedicated, especially to search. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it almost feels intimidating. Be and it feels like, God, it must be so hard. Because there is so much dedicated to understanding search. 
Right. But it really, right. if you break like, it down the way you have, it isn't that difficult, right? And, and that's what I think the beauty is, right? When we're talking about, you know, this Athenium course, the goal here was to break it down as simply as possible for here's what you need to get started. When we start getting into really advanced topics like bid strategies and different ways you can optimize your campaign, that is a whole host of other courses. And, you know, right. really there's a lot of different schools of thought on what those best practices look like. And that's when, again, you know, if you're spending or planning to spend hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, you know, you would bring in a team of those experts that could help you think through the really mathy stuff or the really technical tracking stuff that you need to be as successful as possible. So, and this might be a dumb question. What's the difference between SEM and SEO? Oh, no, I don't think it's a dumb question at all because it is very confusing. So search engine results page, essentially, we're going to have two different types of results. So the first are going to be the ones that show up at the top. They're going to say ad next to them. And those have been paid for by a brand um, via Google ads and the ads auction that we've been talking about. All the rest of the results are going to be organic, which means Google's algorithm has found some sort of ranking factor that's determined that that page should show up on the search engine result page for whatever you search for. So when we're talking about SEO, that's going to be search engine optimization, where we optimize your website to make it essentially as best as it possibly can be to be ranked on Google's search engine result page. SEM, oh, okay. which is also pay-per-click, or PPC, which is just paid search, is God, essentially okay. the series of best practices for the advertisements. So in our course, we're really focused on SEM versus SEO. Got it. Okay, so SEO <laughs> is where I go in and I try and get ranked as high as possible. It's basically free. It just means that I've created my website in such a way using the right words and keywords and yeah. You know, I have enough backlinks and all the other things that you have so that I'm optimized to show up in search. Exactly. So okay. SEO, I really consider to be that series of best practices that is yeah. related to creative and content. It's related to technical. What's your code? What type of structured data do you have on your site? Just to make sure Google can even find it. Um, and that's the stuff that we won't really talk about as much in our course. Got it. So this, we're talking about SEM and more of the paid part of it, which yep, exactly. I, mean, I think is so, I mean, I'm excited because I think it's so approachable. And until I started going through this with you, it didn't feel that way. And I'm like, oh, I, I can't wait to get in there and figure this yeah. out. This um, is going to be your first search ad, right? It'll be my first search ad. Exactly. And you will be coming along for the ride, whether you want to or not. <laughs> we're in it. We're in it. I'm in the car. Let's go. I love it. Um, so when you first started out, I mean, how did you know you wanted to get into advertising? Did you go to school for advertising? Yeah, great question. So I am a Georgia Tech graduate from the Scheller College of Business, very proud graduate. Um, and I did select marketing as my concentration. So my degree is technically a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, but I knew pretty early on that marketing was going to be for me, um, probably because I didn't do so great in accounting. Um, but, you know, I took my first marketing class and I thought, this is so cool. This relates to things that I look back on my life and I've always been so interested in what brands were doing. You know, my dad would take me to Atlanta Braves games growing up and I would just sit there and figure out where the billboards had moved and who was new and wonder how much they paid for it. My dad's like, just watch the game. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, how much do you think Coca-Cola pays for this? And my dad's like, yeah, exactly. whatever, you can't, af you can't afford it. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Love it. So, you know, it's, it's funny because I took um, some marketing classes that were offered at, at Tech. And at the time, it was a special topic called digital marketing. And so it was taught with Pro Professor Michael Buchanan, who I'm actually lecturing with this fall. And the focus really was Google Analytics and some of these uh, maybe measurement options that were emerging. And that was the first class that I ever took where I saw digital ads being discussed. All of my other marketing classes talked about, you know, at a very high level, television, radio, and print. He was the first professor that broke down for us, you know, here's what Google search is. Here's what Facebook is. Here's what Facebook ads look like. And I was hooked. I knew that's what I wanted to do. That's awesome. So from there, you went and you worked at some agencies. How yep. were you trained when you first started? Oh, by fire? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's really scary, right? When you're advertising for the first time, you're spending someone else's money. Um, and I talk about a lot of 
you know, when I was first getting started or when I'm talking to people who are just getting started, it's your job and responsibility to be a good steward of that money because it's not yours. Um, right. And I've spent now, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars that aren't mine, which is really fun, but also a big responsibility. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, when, when you first get started, there are, you know, some resources that exist, but none tell you um, why you should do what you do. A lot of times you're feeling that out. And so I was fortunate. A lot of it was through that osmosis of people around me who were doing similar things. And I'm very thankful for, you know, the impact they've had on my career. But it really does take time to get comfortable and get that gut feeling to make sure that you know what you're doing. Yeah. And it's interesting because I was just seeing uh, eMarketer had this uh, research out that right now because of COVID, you know, they had the, ch the biggest challenges facing marketers. And the number one was training and development. Wow. And number three was onboarding, you mm -hmm. know, new employees. And, and I could see that because we rely so much on this osmosis, this watching somebody else doing it, hearing what everyone else is doing. Uh, just be, you absorb things when you're in an office environment. You can see so many people doing things. And I think what's interesting is, is that in this virtual world, you don't have that. Like you, right. there has to be another way in order to train people and in, in ways to on, onboard people, ways for people to ha grab their attention, help them walk them through. What do you need to do? How do you do it? Like kind of give me the instructions, give me some context so that I can then do it for whatever clients that I'm working on. So I'm really excited that we've created a course that's so applicable. Yeah. Uh, and it uses a lot of those like very master class oriented. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be really, really helpful for people. Absolutely. When you do courses for like the nickel notes, I know you guys work with a lot of different colleges. What does that look like? Is that curriculums? Is that actual you go come in and teach? Yeah. So through nickel notes, you know, we work with a number of different schools at both the undergraduate and graduate level. So um, a lot of times it's within a business school or a communication school. Courses usually focus in search or social media. You know, a lot of the topics that we're going to be covering in the Athenium course. What's, I think, you know, really interesting is a lot of these examples and, and things that we talk about when we're talking with students, it's very theoretical, right? Because yeah. the students haven't yet owned a business or maybe they have some internship experience, but a lot of times they haven't been exposed to really the decision-making process. And I think what's so interesting when you start talking about onboarding and training for new companies or, excuse me, new hires at your company, you know, they now have context. They have those examples. They know the brand that they work at or if they're at an agency, the brands are going to be working on. And so my hope is that when people start to watch these courses, they start to think about, you know, the campaigns they're responsible for and think of other applications or use cases that, you know, we're not going to have time to get into. Yeah, and I think it's so interesting when you talk about stewardship, because, you know, we don't, uh, as advertisers, people in the business, it's so interesting, because you forget when you're talking about millions and millions and millions of dollars, <laughs> that this is money that is spent to reach a goal. Mm -hmm. And I love how you talk about the stewardship of that, that, you know, to making sure that what you're doing is going to give the results that yeah. the advertiser you know, or the marketer wants. And I just, it's interesting because I, you know, my whole career has been that where mm -hmm. the dollar figure exists, but I'm always thinking, you know, about the fact that, okay, this is solving a marketing problem or it's about driving a certain metric and making sure that that happens. Right. And, right. You know, and it's interesting because you have to figure out how do you keep in mind the fact that this is a lot, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But you're also trying to create very specific goals for a marketer. Yeah. You know, and I try to say, you know, like, let's not get blinded by the zeros, whether it's because they're there or because they're not there. Yeah. And, you know, especially if you're working with more smaller emerging companies, they might not have the hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to spend on some of these tactics. But that doesn't mean that, you know, the investment that they've got can't be almost as impactful. Yeah, well, it's the whole thing about awareness, like even if no one converts, let's say, but at least you've reached people, they now know, you know, about your business, what you have, mm -hmm. maybe they don't want to buy it right that moment. But there is absolutely benefit in that impression. 
Yeah. I think it's for sure. For sure. Um, so, you know, what advice do you, cause you're now talking to a lot of young people, uh, people who are going to college, like what advice do you have for people who want to get into this business? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my first piece of advice is it's a great place to be. Um, you know, it's growing, it's fun. The people who work in the community are just amazing. Um, the, the other piece of it is that, you know, you don't have to be great at all things. Um, digital marketing and marketing in general, right? There are so many different aspects of it, whether that's, we were just talking about SEO versus SEM, analytics, there's creative, there's copywriting, there's email mm -hmm. marketing. You know, I could go on and on and on and on. And I, I you know, I, I would love to think that everyone ev all the time could be a jack of all trades and be an expert in all of those things. But if you're trying to get started in marketing and, and digital in particular, and the first thing you try doesn't feel quite right, that's okay. It's, you don't have to be the perfect analyst, the perfect media buyer, the perfect strategist. If you can just take something that you've learned and apply it to the next role you want, then that's progress and that's upward mobility. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, I think especially because you don't know what you don't know until you get into the business. Like I majored in communications. Like what is that? That's everything. Yeah. I mean, everyone communicates. <laughs> I think we're doing it right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I realized, though, that, you know, doing different types of roles, you know, PR is very different than advertising. Totally. totally. Marketing itself, you know, is a different than the actual advertising. Like, there's just so much to it. And that I agree. There's, you know, finding that role and that company who will give you an opportunity to try Mm -hmm. um, you know, building the skills because those skills become applicable to whatever that next role happens to be that kind of feels more like what you want to do. And it's interesting. I see so many people who are like, even mid career thinking, Ugh, what do I do now? Like I've been in this one direction, where do I go? Yeah. And the beauty of it is, is that, you know, you can take new courses, you know, you can learn new things and build onto the skill set you have so that you can pivot Absolutely. if you want. And that's, you know, one of the things I think that's so great about Athenium and a lot of the courses that we're talking about is that, you know, this could be an opportunity for you to make a pivot and think a little bit differently, even if it is about something that you've been exposed to before. Um, you know, you could be in sales, you could be creative, you could be, you know, whatever it is. And maybe just understanding a little bit more about how these ecosystems operate could be the fuel of the fire where all of a sudden you unlock some part of your brain that just hasn't had as much exercise. Um, and I think that that's so fun. I, um, you know, previously in uh, New York and Atlanta, actually, I, I spoke and talked at um, General Assembly. So I was a part-time instructor for about four years. And one of the things that was so fascinating about the people that I met through that process was you'd have some people who were just getting started out, some people who had their own business, and some people who were marketing executives with many, many years of experience who just wanted to understand a little bit more about the nitty gritty. Because, you know, you could have been, you know, 20 years into your career working at a major company and just never had to have been exposed to Google ads or social ads. And so, you know, sometimes courses like these could just be context for you to understand, have empathy for your employees, yeah. your team who are going through this process every day. I also think sometimes when you understand the nitty gritty, you make different decisions at the strategy level. Totally. You know, like and you can have the greatest strategy, but if it doesn't make sense when you actually get in to implement it, yeah, it's not going to work. And I just, I think that it is really important it never hurts to know more. Yeah. Like, it and never things I've loved about, um, there's been multiple strategists that I've worked with in the past who have just been incredible human beings. The strategist who asks about search trends, search volumes, and look into stuff like that, just have this holistic understanding of the marketing landscape, right? And paid search to some people seems a little boring, a little basic, all of that. But Google's keyword planner, which we talk about some in the course, yeah. is just such a powerful tool in understanding what consumer behavior is. And again, you talk about these micro things that can inform your overall strategy. Yeah, it's actually so interesting because we just had this conversation 
yesterday with my team, you know, that helps me with marketing. And what was interesting about it was, is we were talking about all these amazing courses that we're going to be creating. Mm -hmm. And one of them is about, you know, like happiness, like how do you have positive psychology that helps you build practices that make you happy, mm -hmm. happier, that makes you more creative and more productive. Like, what do you call that class? The happy course? Yeah. But she said, I should go into the keyword planner and yes. look at what people are searching for. Like, mm -hmm. you know, even realizing, and again, because I was so intimidated because everyone makes it sound so complicated mm -hmm. that I didn't feel it was approachable. Now I feel so much more uh, like capable after going through it with you that I'm like, oh my God, I'm totally going to do that now. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not that. And I think just because there's so much dedicated to it that it just feels like it's going to be daunting. But I guess it really isn't. Yeah. And that's that's the goal, right? We want to break this down as simply as we can. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I think you do a really good job. So um, I guess it's almost one o'clock. I can't believe how fast this half hour went by. Um, how can people reach you if they wanted to follow up with you if they want to learn more about you and Nickel Notes? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first of all, the DM is always open. Um, OK underscore Hawkins. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Olivia Hawkins. And then, of course, my email address is ohawkins, H-A-W-K-I-N-S, at nickelnotes.com. Fabulous. Awesome. Well, I think we have a busy afternoon ahead of us, um, creating awesome. some more lessons. I'm excited. Thank Can't you wait. so much for joining me. This was really helpful. I hope that um, people get a lot of it. Look for her course on Athenium Collective, which will be digital media buying with Olivia Hawkins and Jeff Nicholson. Thank awesome. you. Thanks, Lisa. All right, talk to you later. Bye.